Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And hello everyone. Um, in this video, we'll be discussing uh, the Keynesian system part one, um, the role of aggregate demand. So specifically, we're going to look at the uh, changes in the equilibrium income. Okay, let me just get the, uh, my whiteboard to be ready. So <clears throat> before we do that, maybe we want to do, uh, we, we'll, we'll just do a simple review. Okay, perhaps uh, after the break, uh, some of you may have forgotten uh, the equilibrium conditions. Okay, so we have the, uh, what, what, so these are the, basically we have um, our income, okay, in the equilibrium, the equilibrium income must basically equals to the aggregate expenditure. Okay, so we have um, the components. So these are the components of uh, aggregate expenditure, consumption by household, investment okay by the firm and then we have the government spending by the government so we're going to simply assume that we are still dealing with the closed economy okay where there is uh, no trade okay with uh, other countries in the world and um, our uh, consumption okay uh, we we have already expanded this basically we have uh, so we know that in equilibrium our aggregate income would basically equals to um a okay plus b y where this is the uh, equation for consumption okay minus b t okay remember our disposable income since there is a government so the government will impose tax and then we have i plus g okay so we have done this before so we can rearrange we can collect uh, the, all the y terms and put it on the left hand side of the equation okay, we're going to have our equilibrium income basically equals to 1 over 1 minus b then we can have put everything back okay all the other terms we're going to collect them and put them in this uh, parenthesis b minus t plus i plus g okay and uh, please okay recall uh, from our previous discussion this term is what is known as the autonomous expenditure multiplier and all the other terms in the bracket is known as the autonomous expenditure. Okay, and this B Okay, this B is also known as the marginal propensity to consume. Okay, so this is uh, because of uh, what we have discussed previously. Uh, household, whenever they receive an income, there will be a leakage in the form of saving. They will not spend everything for consumption expenditure, but they will keep some as, as saving. So that kind of a, a, a leakage, okay. And uh, the uh, autonomous... Uh, Expenditure multiplier basically measures the change in uh, equilibrium income per unit change in autonomous expenditure. Okay? And while the autonomous expenditure, these are expenditures that are basically determined by factors other than income. Okay? So let's go back to what we want to do in, in this video. So we plan to have a look at the, uh, to, to analyze uh, changes in equilibrium income. So this is what we plan to do in this video. Okay, the, the changes in uh, equilibrium income. So let's say we want to know, uh, we want to analyze, okay, um, analyze uh, these uh, changes, okay, the changes in equilibrium income. So let's uh, pick one component. So let's say, um, let's pick G, okay, the component G, the government. So uh, from the previous slide, okay, we already know that uh, our equilibrium income okay, would equal to uh, the uh, autonomous expenditure multiplier, okay, multiply with A minus BT, okay, the tax component plus I plus G. Okay, so um, a change okay, um, in, in, in G, okay, so a change in G, The government uh, spending, okay, so would basically uh, cause our equilibrium income, okay, to change 
by this amount. One, because there is a G here. Okay, so assuming um, a ceteris paribus, all the other components remain the same. So we have 1 over 1 minus P multiplied with the change in G. Okay, uh, so basically we have, if we rearrange the term, okay, we have um, a change, okay, in equilibrium income over the change in G, basically equals to 1 over 1 minus B. Okay, so the, the left-hand side term, Okay, so it basically measures, well, let me just try to get it. Uh, okay, so this side, okay, the left-hand side term. So this basically tells us uh, you, the uh, one unit, okay, change in income, okay, in uh, government expenditure, okay, causes a change in income of 1 over 1 over B unit, okay. So, this is what we are trying to measure here and uh, this term Okay, this term is also okay, known as the government spending multiplier. Okay, the G multiplier. Okay, so basically uh, whenever uh, there is a change okay, in government expenditure, let's say if G goes up, we know that income would go up by a bigger amount. Okay, so it depends on the value of B. The marginal propensity uh, uh, to consume because this basically going to have a ripple effect okay or a multiplier effect um so let's just uh, and uh, let's let's just do a simple analysis okay graphically what would happen when the government uh, you know uh, increase okay their expenditure so we're going to have um, as always we're going to have two graphs So this is basically C. So what we're going to have in the first graph on the vertical axis, we have CIG. Okay, and here we're going to measure income. Okay. So the 45 degree line, okay, which is the equilibrium condition. Okay, so this is a 45 degree line. Okay. And we already know. Okay, so how do we draw the aggregate expenditure? So let's say originally, initially, we are here. Okay, we are here. Okay. So this is our, let's say this is the initial condition, our E0, where our consumption, okay, plus I plus G0, okay. And what is the, the, the intercept here? So this would be the intercept where we have A minus BT, okay, uh, plus I plus G0, okay, plus G0. And uh, correspondingly, okay, correspondingly, uh, in the in the graph below, okay, so we're gonna have uh, still on the horizontal axis we're gonna have uh, our income, and here we're gonna have I G S and T, okay. So um, so let's just draw the um, uh, our saving shadow, okay, saving plus tax shadow. So which is gonna be uh, somewhere negative. So it will correspond to here. Okay, so here we are doing some this saving, so that's why our saving is negative. Okay, before we uh, cross, okay, the horizontal axis. And uh, let me just try to, to 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 get okay to draw this correctly. So this is our S plus T, and uh, correspondingly, let's see. Uh, I need to uh, really be careful here because I want to get the equilibrium. So this is our equilibrium, our initial uh, equilibrium. This is our equilibrium income. Okay, y bar zero, which should correspond to, let's say somewhere here. Okay, and this is similarly, this is our y zero bar. Okay, and um, I, I just need to draw this line over here so to make sure that it crosses the saving and tax shadow here. 
And what is this? This is basically our I plus G zero, our initial government expenditure. Okay. Now let's say what happens when the in this graph. So basically, we're gonna see what happens when uh, G okay has gone up okay, from G zero to G one. Okay, so this may basically happens when the let's say the government decided uh, uh, to um, I don't know to to motivate more demand. Okay, let's say uh, to 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 uh, push uh, the recovery from the recession. So as G goes up from G zero to G one, okay, this would basically push okay our uh, aggregate expenditure because it is a component here. Okay, so our so so let's say this is by delta g okay by delta g so this will push okay our aggregate expenditure line okay to go up okay where now we are having a new aggregate expenditure okay assuming consumption and investment remain the same and this is g1 okay g1 now the change here the change here is basically delta g okay delta g now what will be our new intercept sure our new intercept okay, would be a minus no change in tax plus i plus g1 okay which is a higher uh, government expenditure so now we are going to end up at a new equilibrium income which is y bar one okay now this line that's why i need to somewhere here so basically the our uh, i plus d schedule okay would also shift up okay shift up to be somewhere here now this is i plus g1 okay where this is uh, so this is originally i plus g0 and this is i plus g1 now there is a shift okay in our i plus g schedule okay below here okay by the same amount of delta g okay delta g and that basically we're going to end up at a higher equilibrium income which is y bar one okay now take note that the shift here okay the change in equilibrium income okay from y0 to y1 okay from y0 to y1 okay now this is the change in income okay the change in income um if you can see here the 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 size of the change in income okay is bigger than the change in in g okay in g okay well why 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 is why is it like this okay this is because of the multiplier effect okay this is because of the uh, multiplier effect okay where um, let's say the government you know the increase okay is uh, let's say a hundred dollars Okay, $100. So when government increases its expenditure by $100, we know that the government would basically use that, okay, to pay for the factors of production. Okay, let's say they want to build a new hospital. So they have to pay to all the contractors, the workers, okay, so this is going to be basically income uh, to the firm that, that is uh, uh, building the, the hospital, okay, and it's going to give payment to all the uh, materials providers, uh, the, the laborers, and and this uh, labors uh, the household gonna basically then use those income and spend as consumption okay so uh, and and they will save a, a, a portion of it so let's say the 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 um, the marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.8 okay with mpc of 0 0.8 okay mpc so let's say 0 0.8 so what gonna happen is that the household the firm gonna spend 80 percent of that 100 okay of that 100 uh, ringgit and then the other 20 ringgit, of course, they will, they, they're going to save it. And that 80 ringgit would then be going to basically be income to some other uh, agents in the economy. So that's how the, why the, the change in income will be greater. It will be multiplied, okay, because there is a ripple effect. Uh, a, a single change in, in one of the components of aggregate expenditure here, like G here, going to basically create a ripple effect, uh, which will cause uh, the change in uh, income, okay, going to be, uh, gonna be higher okay and that basically gonna also be reflected in our uh, saving and tax schedule as well as the i uh, investment and uh, government schedule here yeah, in this graph here so the, the 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 shift here okay in equilibrium income is basically bigger than 
uh, the shift in uh, equi- uh, in uh, in the government uh, expenditure okay and uh, basically the um, the slope okay of this okay this um, aggregate expenditure schedule okay the slope here okay is b represented by the marginal propensity to consume while the slope okay of our uh, s plus t shadow this is represented by the uh, one minus b which is the uh, the residual of this which is the, basically the marginal propensity to to save okay and i think uh, that's all uh, for now okay i'll be making uh, short videos uh, hopefully it will uh, be easier for you to watch it during your free time. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, see you next time. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.